Hey, this is Greg Brown with the start of Stage 10 and the second week of the 2019 Giro d'Italia. We're in Ravenna. It's sunny. We're inland from Venice. I think I hear the pink jersey just came out of his bus. This is the Po Valley and it sweeps up and it's going to reveal the upcoming mountain stages. We're happy to be here. We're happy the sun's out because it's been a wet and cold first week. So the rider's going to race through the valley up to the northwest, up into Piedmont and the region up there. It's going to be the first true climbing stages, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Climb up to Lago Seru, climbs like Gizalo. What we want to know is what gearing will they use? What cluster will they use in the back? Will they use a compact, a semi-compact, or just a standard chain set? Let's go talk to some of the riders. The mountain stages are on the horizon. Are you already thinking about your gearing choices? What will you use in these upcoming mountain stages? Yeah, for sure. Depends how it's the really uphill. It's like around maybe when it's really steep, then we use like 30 behind and 36 in the front. And yeah, and also 53 like normal one, 11. And when it's like 5, 6 percent, it's normal 28, uh, 39 in the front. I mean, uh, they, some, some guys like 36, some guys like 38. Um, in the back, they have 32s, you know, so they're pretty high gearing here. Probably uh, something uh, something easy like uh, 36. 36 up front. What a 30 in the back? Yeah, yeah, something like that. But uh, how, how often do you get in those gears on the mountains? Uh, quite a bit. I think. Uh, yeah, let's see. In Basque Country, uh, for sure, I probably have those most of the race. Um, but yeah, as the race, uh, you know, second and third week, definitely a bit more tired and maybe a bit harder for the legs to turn over the gears, so it um, doesn't hurt to have some bailout gears. For me, I think uh, on the back I'll try a 30 cassette. Um, that should, should get me over the mountains, and then on the front I'll have a 53 and uh, either a 38 or 36 um, to get me over those mountains. So possibly a 36 and a 30 in the back, that would be the easiest combination? Yeah, for sure. I think even a climb like the Mortarolo, um, you'll need a gear like that. Um, to be able to sit down and um, even have some chance of um, spinning a gear. So um, the days after it are pretty difficult, so it's important to save your legs as much right. as possible. So um, yeah, as I said, I think that would be a pretty good gearing. There should be quite a selection to, to suit every kind of terrain. For the real steep climbs, I'll probably run a 34 up front, 32 in the back. I've never had the issue like, oh, I have too easy of a gear. It's always nice to be able to sit and spin. And sometimes, actually, I'll run a 36-54 up front, um, just because I find if it's strung out in one line and fast that uh, one extra gear on the big ring can like save you a bit. Yeah, it depends on, uh, on the gradient of the climb, but uh, actually I'm used to, to ride with 36-30 uh, in the back. 36-30? Yeah because you got to haul your big frame up those mountain climbs. Exactly, also my big fat ass. Primoz Rolic leads with a good margin over his rivals. When he wasn't in the pink jersey, he was smashing it in the time trial over guys like Vincenzo Nibli, Bob Jungles, and of course, Simon Yates. It'll be interesting to see if he can hang on and go for four for four. He's already won three stage races, the only three stage races that he entered this year, the UAE Tour, Triano Adriatico, and the Tour of Romandier. Can he hang on all the way to the end? We still got two more weeks to go. And if not, who will? Let's hear from the insiders to find out who will win this race and how they're going to win it. Who's going to win this race, and how is it going to be won? Uh, I think Nibali is going to win. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think he'll just chip away, and you know, the I wouldn't underestimate the last week. I mean, I think you know, thus far Roglic has seemed the strongest, and obviously he's a favorite to win, and I could see that happening too. But you know, Nibali did a good time trial, and. You can also never count him out taking time on a wet descent or, you know, he's a exceptional, he's a racer. I don't know if it's going to be a Bunyo style one race by uh, Roglic, you know, I would say almost day one to day 21. Could happen, I mean, he's, he's riding really strong, he's showing a big super, superiority, is that how you say in English? Uh, TTs, climbs, we haven't done an hour climbing yet, so. That's something going to be interesting, you know, when you, once you get on these climbs and you climb for an hour, it's going to be a little bit different. 
really happy to see Nibali into shape. You know, Nibali is a guy to watch. You know, he's he knows how to move, when to move. Uh, he's got the confidence. He's got the knowledge. So he's going to be. It's actually great that he's there doing really good. Primos leads the virtual GC, so is it him just defending or do you expect him to attack a little bit? Uh, you, you never know with Primos. I, I can uh, you know I can picture him attacking but uh, yeah it's it's hard to say. You know Roglic seems really strong right now uh, but of course uh, on the side of Nibali there is experience so he can use the, this as well in the third week. So it's coming down to Nibali and Roglic and, and you think Nibali will win it on experience in the third week? I, uh, I hope so because he's Italian, he's a friend, uh, but as well Roglic uh, is a really nice guy so uh, for the fans of cycling I, I hope to see a big, a big, let's say, fight from them. For now the Roglic is really strong and when he's keep like this then it should be difficult but we know he's a lot of GC guys then for sure try to do it something. Is Roglic going to win it, yes or no? I tell you in Verona. <laughs> Well, we heard from the insiders on what gearing they're going to use for the upcoming uh, mountain stages, the cyclists are letting us know, and also their thoughts on who's going to win this Giro d'Italia overall and how they're going to do it. What are your thoughts? What gearing would you use in the mountain stages if you were here riding, and who do you think will win the 2019 Giro? Let us know in the comments down below, and as always, make sure to subscribe and share these videos with your friends, and give us some ideas what you'd like to see in future Cycling Weekly vlogs. Thanks for watching.